where did you start with this score? I started with a script. Well, no, I, st I started with evading Luca for about a year. <laughs> I think my way in was the song Suspirium. Within the script, there was this melancholy, which I was really surprised about, not like a normal horror film at all. The story about, you know, the stories and what he was trying to put across was not really, not to scare you. It was more, it was more than that or different from that. A weird darkness, um, yeah, a weird form of darkness. Every single thing that was written was written because someone asked me to, which was um, kind of nice. It was kind of a freeing thing because there's no sense of sort of my identity on it at all. It was, um, um, I, I'm, I'm whoever he wanted to be at that moment for whatever particular section of the, the film. You know, I, I went from having to write from a quartet to writing a, a weird uh, synthesizer piece in five, eight and three to writing a, for a choir in German. <laughs> <laughs> really, I kind of said yes Partly because he kept asking, and <laughs> I thought it was—I thought it was. I was like, "Mate, you realise, you know, I've never done this before, right?" <laughs> and it didn't seem to bother Luca at all. So I'm like, "Okay." Did you enjoy the element of seating yourself um, quite a long way outside your comfort zone? It, it was difficult. It was not easy. Uh, it wasn't like. I'm thoroughly enjoying being out of my comfort zone. <laughs> it was uh, much more like, what, what is going on? What am I doing? You know, I am so out of my depth. And then a little voice in my head going, ha ha. <laughs> you know, by the time I got to like working with the LCO and doing the choral stuff and um, having Hugh, who um, conducts the LCO, helping me, because I can't read music, helping transcribe what I've written to a score, by the time I stood um, in Air Studios and watched the singers, play, uh, singers performing what I'd sketched out on a microphone, by that point I was like, all right, well, it's basically all, it's just music. It's, it's whether it's on a score or whether it's um, scrolling from left to right on my computer, it's the same thing, it's all the same thing. The high, one of the big highlights was, was that for me, was like, Understanding that, that, that not to be intimid intimidated about it. I suppose in that set of circumstances as well, you're very much reliant on your primary instinct, right? You ain't got anything else. <laughs> It's just it was sort of turning certain elements of what I do right up. Like it was more, it was more like uh, more like drawing or painting than than songwriting. Songwriting is 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 you know it's like a storytelling thing. It's it it's a uh, modulations. It's chords. It's this and this and this. And there was a lot of that, as you will hear or have heard. But um, there was also just making noises, just that thing I've always wanted to do, all those, you know, you do, when you collaborate in the studio, there has to be a point, you're going in a certain direction with other people, when you're on your own, you, you don't necessarily have that, you have a, a remit, you have a,
place you want to get to, you, you know, you're looking for, uh, for example, I'm, I'm looking for a way of finding this melody, taking it to somewhere it, refu- it doesn't want to go, you know, um, spitting it out of a machine that doesn't understand that melody and seeing what it gives me back, things like that. Um, tinkering around with new toys that I didn't know how to use, you know, which is an essential part of all studio work is, is that, like, don't read the manual, just plug it in thing, <laughs> um, which was... Mm, well, about 80% of the soundtrack, wasn't it, Sam? <laughs> no I, I enjoyed the learning bit. I enjoyed the looking back at my knowledge from a different point of view, rather than uh, always coming to it from a songwriting place, which in itself has its limitations, because you are just... It's always, you can experiment for weeks, but it's got to fit back into wherever you were with the song and the arrangement and the no, no. So 78% of it gets dropped. So I'm coming to it from the other end where oh, I'll just throw it on the song ever, whatever, it doesn't matter. or, you know, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's all because I'm, I'm working someone else's idea and someone else's concept. Throughout the film, even though it's a horror film, I think it's more about people trying to chase death, trying to avoid death, um, trying the rituals involved in the film, as you'll see, the dance, every dance, every movement is is about trying to cheat death. Um, and that's the thing that sort of stuck with me and that's the the sadness of that, you know. How do you deal with a deadline? Oh, well, I don't have them usually. It was a novel concept. Early on in our career as professional musicians, we, we ditched the concept of deadlines. <laughs> as soon as we made the record company any money, it was like, right, first thing that goes is deadlines. So <laughs> you're just going to have to wait. Your son is playing drums, oh, yeah. isn't he? Noah, Noah on yeah. the record. How did it feel to involve the family? It was great. I mean, it just seemed really natural because I hear him drumming all the time. I hear, you know, he's a, he's a great musician. Um, so it just seemed really normal to do it. Um, uh, and my daughter helped me with uh, some of the artwork ideas as well. It's just, you know, they're in the house, so we're talking about it all the time. A part of me wants to protect him from that, but like, yeah, he played the drums on it, you know, so I hope he's proud of that. I wanted to talk to you a bit about Sam's contribution as well, because obviously he's been with us all day in Maida Vale, mm. um, messing around with loops and helping the engineers in the in the little control room. Um, yeah. I've got desk right, Sam. envy. <laughs> Tell us about Sam's contribution to the record. What's so, he been up to? So, um, basically... <laughs> it's really a, it's a really easy way to describe this. Imagine like you're in a room for like eight months, and in the course of that eight months, you've imagined you've you've tied yourself in so many knots, you can't find one one thread that pulls out the other way from that thread and that thread, and and eventually I just you know I called Sam and I said Sam, please help me untie these knots because I don't know what any of these knots are anymore. It's all very well to do all this stuff, but then you have to go and you have to mix it within the film. Then you are sitting in a room competing with sound effects and speech and everything else. Um, which I, I had no idea. I couldn't possibly do that. So Sam was there for two months. Two long months. <laughs> 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 
magic word. Can I ask you one final question? No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you happy? I'm all right. Are you? Yeah, I am today. I'm all right. Yeah, I'm okay. I mean, I'm happy when I'm working. I'm happy when everybody's all right that I love. So I'm okay. Thank you. Tom York, thank you so much. 